Yes, good afternoon. Or well, good morning. Or evening, anytime you watch this lecture video. Um, we're supposed to have time together this um, yesterday and today. But we have a power failure. Now, I want to quickly do this lecture to help us catch up what we have missed. I'm going to go straight to what we have. I need to do two important uh, coverage uh, coverages of um, lecture topics that we we'll need in our practicals, in our lab session. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, if you have not logged into your module, please do and register. We have started with the operating system. This is PCS216, Computer Hardware Maintenance and Repairs 2. Now we're going to be looking at two important topics today. Major system files of the operating system. We call it a system files. And then we also look at um, file system because they can be easily um, mistaken. You can, you can uh, mistake one for the other. That's why we want to look at them together. Um, last time we have looked at the uh, Windows registry. Uh, by now, I expect you to and we have done Windows installation procedure. Uh, we have tried to install Windows XP. Windows 7, uh, we'll be moving straight to Windows 10. We will jump Windows 8. And uh, I'll be doing most of the practical on Windows 7 and Windows 10. Uh, Windows XP has become um, outdated. Windows 7 also is already uh, not supported by the um, technical you know, uh, people. There's no technical support now for Windows 7 as of now. So, uh, but some systems, some people still use it. So we need to look at that. And then some are already using Windows 8. So if those are using Windows 8, uh, Windows 10 can also take care of that. So, but we recommend Windows 10 now. Now we have looked at how to install Windows XP and Windows 7. Uh, but today I'm going to quickly look at these two topics. Um, major file system, major system files. System files. The files that system use, okay? That the operating system use. So, and that is system files of that, then we'll now look at file systems. It's just like we have a filing system, a, a system of arranging files, okay? So take note of that. So a system of storing files, a filing system, if you want to take it like that. Now, I move easily, I quickly, um, um, let me do, a new share. Um, okay, I'll, I'm still all right there. Yeah, so let me quickly look at system files. Okay, now system files. Now let me talk about system files. When you install the Microsoft Windows XP uh, or Windows 7 or whatever, the sort of program will create folders on your system drive into which it will copy files that the system requires. So these are what we call system files. Files that are required by the system to operate normally and to perform system functions, okay? Knowing the names and location of essential system files can help you understand and help you to troubleshoot your window your window installation. So it's, it applies to all the windows. 
whether Windows XP or Windows 7 or Windows 10 or Windows 8, then you know where these files are stored. You can um, have some understanding how to troubleshoot and how to solve problems. So uh, we, as you can see, uh, let's look at uh, these are uh, system files that are come up with XP. The same thing you will see with Windows 7. Um, so um, most of most, I mean, these files are located in the Windows slash system 32 folder. Okay, or in Win NT slash 32 slash 32 in uh, probably uh, Windows 2000 uh, and Windows NT. Now, uh, for instance, I'm going to share with us um, this, where these are actually located. Uh, so um, let me clear run through them and then you will have, we'll see what it, so the first one is uh, ntoskernel.exe. It's an executable, it's an executable file, and is also the kernel. The kernel is the core, is one that serves to uh, probably bind all the other ones. Is the the most important in this uh, system part. It's very very critical. If the NTOS kernel.exe is not there, then most you cannot have the operating system. Then we have the NT kernel PA is the physical address uh, extension for the executive and kernel. Okay, it's trying to extend this to have support for physical addressing, which allows addressing of more than giga four gigabytes of physical RAM. Okay, so which is like an extension to the previous um, kernel, NTOS kernel. Now we also have the HAL, hardware abstraction layer, the DLL. DLL stands for dynamic link library. Very, very important. Um, so hardware abstraction layer is to make sure that it's able to recognize the hardware able to present the hardware in software form to the operating system. Okay, so if then we have the wing, uh, so that will be needed for most of the drivers to be able to uh, interact with the operating system. Now, win32k.sys is the kernel mode part of the win32 subsystem. So that's the kernel mode part. Uh, then we have the ntdll.dll, okay? You already know it's the dynamic link library, uh, providing internal support functions and system service dispatch stuff to executive function. So ntdll is the NT dynamic link library. Then we have this important one, kernel32.dll, advanced API, adds api32.dll, user32.dll, and gdi32.dll. So uh, these are very core Windows 32 subsystem dynamic library files, okay? Uh, kernel, you know, will be interacting more with kernel, anything that has to do with kernel32. Um, then advanced API, and, uh, that is an uh, application programmable uh, interface, uh, application programming interface. 32 bit, then user 32 is handling the user, uh, the user, you know, um, stuff. And then we have the GDI. Now GDI is used for the graphic device interface, okay? And it's going to be the one that will be handling the, your Windows environment, your user, your graphic user interface, okay? Your GUI. Now we also have the startup files. This, you know, are the files that will be loaded as the operating system is booting. 
and they're normally located in the root or root directory. For example, C colon slash, that is your root you know, of your Windows XP provisional or your Windows 7 or even Windows 10 or Windows 8. So we have the NT loader. This is NT LDR. It loads, it reads the boot dot INI, that is the boot initialization file, and present the boot menu, and then it will now load the NTS kernel.esc into RAM, which now takes control. Now it also loads the uh, boot VID. The DLL, it loads the um, hardware abstraction layer, hardware abstraction layer DLL, and boot start device drivers. Okay, let me pause this recording quickly. Okay, uh, uh, we we'll continue. Just trying to talk about the NT loader, NTLDR, um, that uh, is at the essential setup files. It will read the boot dot NNI for the booting. Uh, it will read the NNI file. It will present the boot menu and load the NTS, NTOS kernel dot ESE. And also it will load the boot VID dot DL, DLL. It will load the hardware version layer, the DLL, and the boot start, and it also will start device drivers. And that's the function of that uh, uh, NTR loader, NT, sorry, NTLDR, I mean NT loader. Now boot n boot dot n i n i i boot the boot dot i n i contains option for starting versions of Windows that set up installs and any pre-existing window installation. It does the boot in, in a boot initialization. Then entity detects, we detect um, a lot of things here. EntityDetect.com, after the boot selection is made, entity loader loads and executes the system bit remote program to query the computer for basic device and configuration information. This information include the following, the time and date information stored in the CMOS system. This is the number that I remember, the complementary metallic oxide semiconductor we talked about in first semester. Um, so then the types of buses that are there in the machine. You know, we talk about the different types of buses these are communication links, communication wire on the motherboard. Uh, we have the ESA, industrial, industry standard architecture. We have the PCI, the peripheral, um, the peripheral, you know, component interconnect. Uh, we have the um, extended industry standard architecture. We have the macro channel architecture, MCA. Uh, all these things, it will look at, detect them, and we have other one, AG, uh, AGP, Advanced Graphic Port, and uh, all the other uh, bus type of buses, and uh, identifiers for devices attached to the buses. Okay, to look at the type of buses on the system, and the identifiers for the devices attached to the buses. Okay, there will be identifiers for the devices attached to the buses. Then the number, size, and type of disk drive on the on the system. Okay, these are these that will be detected. The type of mouse input devices connected to the system, the number and type of parallel ports configured on the system. Um, then you also have um, page five does SY contain memory data that Windows is unable to fit into physical. Okay. During startup, the virtual memory manager removes data in and out of the paging files to optimize the amount of physical memory available to the operating system and application. So the page file .sy is actually what manages the virtual memory, okay? Okay, so this contains memory data that Windows is able to fit into physical and which will now be deployed on the virtual memory on the physical hard drive, okay? It will not be on the, in the RAM, but in the physical. So this is 
or what actually helps to uh, boost your system performance. The physical one may be two gig, and then they're able to get another virtual memory two gig from the hardware. So making about four gig. To, so intermediate files can be stored. Intermediate result of processing um, of, of, of processing can be stored on that uh, uh, temporary file and temporary um, direction. It's a, it's a temporary direction. But we're going to show you on the physical drive. So, um, so it's actually to optimize the amount of physical memory available to the system and application to optimize and to augment, so to say. Now we have the NT boot DD dot SYS. If either the boot or system drives are SCSI, uh, well, for those of us who are new, um, SCSI is not very common now. Uh, SCSI based uh, hard drives are very fast very rugged and they are normally used in a network environment. But um, it seems that SATA is taking over. So SCOSI just stands for Small Computer System Interface. It can handle, uh, you know, um, storage of files and, um, and uh, information and data. Uh, and allow high speed transfer. So SCSI used to be very expensive, but since um, SATA has become popular and they seem to be cheaper. So we're not hearing more of uh, SCSI now. Okay. So what are the folders on the local to this? What are the folders you take note? The folders that you have document and setting, this is the folder that all your documents and all the settings are kept. Uh, each user account is represented by a subfolder assigned the username and call the user profile. Uh, folders on that each include my documents, desktop, and start menu. Then program files are where the installed applications, such as Microsoft Internet Explorer, Microsoft Office, which comprise of the Microsoft Word, uh, Excel, uh, access and uh, PowerPoint. Um, then we have the Windows or NT. This is the entire operating system uh, folder. And then uh, look at the window folders, uh, window NT, okay? You can see uh, my screen operating system and the files are here. We have a control.ini, desktop and notepad, DSD, and, and system.ini files. Then we have the add-ins. Then we have the add, uh, application parts. We have the config. Okay, very important. This is where we we you now you can see this config with capital. Okay, and then um, we have the connection wizard. We have the uh, client side caching file. You know where offline files that are used during collection files uh, caching are stored. We have the cursor, cursor and uh, icon files. And uh, we have all this you are seeing. Thank you. I will stop here. The power just went off. I will continue from here. Um, these are the ones that are here. And uh, these are the other ones. Okay. <clears throat> 